I'm Bill Powell. I'm the director of the American Chestnut Research and Restoration Project here at the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry. This is a project that was started back in 1990 to try to develop a blight tolerant American chestnut tree that we could use in restoration. The chestnut blight was introduced actually in the late 1800s. People were beginning to import Asian species of chestnut trees for ornamental and horticultural uses. But at that time, they didn't realize that when you bring over a tree, you're also bringing all the microorganisms of the tree. So they had this unintended consequence of bringing over a certain fungus that was a pathogen to chestnuts. And that jumped off the Asian chestnut trees onto the American chestnut trees. The American chestnut trees were naive to this fungus and were very susceptible. And therefore, the chestnut blight got hold and started to kill chestnut trees. Our intended consequence now is to solve that problem. How do you bring back the lost American chestnut trees? The fungus is here, it's endemic, it's never gonna go away. It can actually survive on oak trees. So you have to make a tree that can coexist with this pathogen. And therefore, we intended to find genes that allow the tree to survive in the presence of this fungus. And that's what we have done through our research. Basically, we had to find what genes might actually confer light resistance. And then we had to actually develop the methods because no one did this with chestnut before. And then we had to test the genes, which ones would be effective at conferring blight resistance or tolerance. Then we had to look at, okay, we have a blight tolerant tree. What are some of the other effects it's gonna have on the non-target organisms? On the environment and so that's when we start doing all those types of tests and as we go through those tests we keep finding no difference no difference and if you look at some of the traditional methods such as hybrid breeding which has been done with chestnut or even things like radiation breeding which has been done with chestnut and you compare it to genetic engineering there's actually less risk with the genetic engineering and you might think well why is that well because two reasons we are making a very small change to the genome, where the other methods make fairly large changes. And we make a change that we know everything there is about. We actually sequence the whole genome and sequence where the change is. And people don't do that with traditional breeding. So the risk factor is lower with genetic engineering. You also have to consider the risk of doing nothing. Everything has risk. If you do something, it has risks. If you do nothing, it has risks which has the greater risk. And with chestnut, doing nothing has a very significant risk. That is the loss of the tree, as well as its ecosystem services that it normally provides. You have to always compare risks to benefits.